Yep. Okay. I share my screen and can get started. So, um, can you see my screen yet? Oh, good. Good. Okay. So uh, today, like we're going to be discussing about uh, operational budget planning, how we can uh, forecast budget, uh, like uh, when we ask for the budget, which is actually uh, the final part of your presentation, is going to be uh, your budget ask. So when you prepare that budget ask or that uh, like budget uh, like requirements, what do you need to include? What do you need to consider? And how do you do it? So now uh, we're going to be seeing uh, that. So it's uh, more of a technical part. So uh, if you have any question, don't hesitate to ask. OK, let's get started. So first, let's start, let's start with uh, what operational budget plan is to get started. We will uh, start with. So uh, it just involves uh, forecasting uh, and managing the financial resources required to support on top of business operations. So you want to start and you want to continue business. So uh, you're going to plan or you're going to be forecasting uh, what you're going to be needing in terms of financial resources for the future, uh, like for your business to run or continue to run in operations, to continue to be in operations. So it ensures that the company has sufficient fund uh, to meet its operational needs, achieves uh, like its strategic objectives. So uh, by having like budget planning and uh, like learning your budgets, you will uh, make sure that uh, like you will be you will not your operations will not be stopped because of uh, financial shortage and such things. Uh, so. You will meet your operational needs. So the basic objectives or the main objectives of uh, budget planning include like to allocate resources effectively. So uh, when you know how much each department needs to continue, so you can uh, then if, like effectively allocate your financial resources uh, very efficiently. Uh, you can control your costs. So uh, once you uh, like forecast your expenses and expenditures you will be able to control your cost because you already know uh, how much you are going to like, pay or uh, expend so uh, you can monitor and manage your expense uh, to stay within the budget so having the budget is also going to limit how much expenditure you can have so if you have uh, like a budget of 100 million so you will you will try your best uh, not to exceed uh, that uh, budget. So in the, the expense you need to, like you will manage to keep it under that budget. <laughs> and it's also uh, forecast this financial performance. So by predicting the future financial conditions, so it will help you make informed decisions. Uh, plus it supports this decision making. So having this budget plan will provide like a framework for you to have a uh, like uh, an informed to make an informed decision uh, especially for making strategic uh, business decisions so it has a lot like a lot a lot of uh, like uh, advantage when it comes to special startups and of course uh, like any kind of business so what are the calculus like the components of an operational budget? So the first thing the most uh, is the revenue forecast. So it's just the production of your income from sales. Uh, it could be like if you are selling products, it could be from sales. If you are selling your service, it could be from a uh, sale of service. But anything that you provide for, like in return for money. Uh, so like. How much are you going to pay for those? So that's called uh, revenue forecast. Uh, expense estimates are just uh, uh, estimates of fixed cost and variable cost. You have actually seen this, what this means uh, last time, but fixed costs are just costs that are not vary with 
downloading product you said or downloading the product you did. Yeah, but um, uh, posts are very much dependent on the number of product you sell or the amount of sales moving so So, for example, production costs. So if you are like, if you are selling a product, how much does uh, do you spend or do you spend to manufacture the products? In some the amount of products you make, right? So, products like market happiness. For one means you could have like a very high marketing expense for the next two months, and you even not have any marketing expense, right? So, it's pretty much viable. Uh, capital expenditure, like capitalist expenditures, are like when you purchase big. Machineries, we invest in big equipment, technologies, and so on. So, these are not like uh, small purchases, but rather big purchases that you need for that will uh, be used for the long term. And cash flow projection is just expected cash flow, like cash inward, which we call inflow. Okay, which is called flow. So, cash inflow, cash outflow, actually, like very, very uh, important in the sense of business because it determines liquidity and so on. So, then liquidity means uh, how much cash do you have in order to meet short term applications. And of course, the last one is contingency. And it's just fund, it's just easily fund for unexpected. Expenses, so these are you just keep some uh, some money outside just to, uh, just for a every day. Yeah, so this case started with the first one, which is revenue forecast. So revenue forecasting is just forecasting your income by using historical data and uh, the market analysis to predict uh, future revenues. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Can you back to the previous slide because your your voice was very far and it was not okay. okay. Yeah, this okay. Part. Which, which part? Like the last one? Yeah, the last three. Oh, the last three. Okay. Um, so I, I was just saying that capital expenditure are like big investments, uh, like uh, investments in equipment, machineries, technologies, uh, like car, it could be a car, a truck, and so on. So these are big, big expenditures. They are not some uh, like the, the small expenditures. So they are big expenditures, the entire expected to last for a long period. And cash flow projection is just uh, how much you expect to to uh, there to be a uh, cash inflow and outflow so cash inflow means what you get in cash in cash outflow is what you pay in cash so cash inflow like determining cash inflow and uh, cash outflow and uh, staying on the positive cash flow side is going to help you because liquidity is is a very very like a uh, crucial uh, component of uh, business because you need like liquidity means just uh, the amount of cash like like the cash, like cash on hand that you have, uh, just to meet short term obligations, right? So you could have a lot of uh, options to have to get cash, but cash is the, mo the most liquid way and you can use it uh, to meet your um, short term obligations. So, for example, if you need, uh, let's say, one million per and uh, if you don't have that much money, like uh, the company could stop operating until you get that money right so uh, we don't need it as well that's why you need it to have a good cash flow of course over liquidating is also not good because we were liquidating for result of uh, an efficient use of cash because uh, your cash is always with you and liquidated so you're not going to be using it uh, to generate income right so to generate revenue. So just finding that balance is very, very important. Uh, contingency fund is just reserved or, uh, for un unexpected 
uh, explained. So this is just some, a small portion of uh, your budget that you uh, include because uh, like if there is some unexpected expenses that you need to, you need to cover, you can use that. It's just this is basically five five percent of the budget, and so we will see that that's basically it. Okay. And for revenue forecasting, uh, revenue for forecasting is uh, forecasting your income by using historical data. If if the company is already there for a long time and has historical data, you can use historical data in order to for forecast your income, or you can use the market analysis to predict uh, future revenues. Uh, like in, in normally, you do it in a combination of the two historical data of your company, plus the current mar market analysis in order to get uh, your future, uh, like the British future levels. But if you are a new company, like uh, you are creating right now, we will see how we're going to do it. But uh, for now, like, uh, it's uh, like a combination of historical data plus market analysis. So the method is uh, trend analysis, uh, which is examining past trends uh, to project the future sales. Uh, market research, uh, just to analyze the market condition uh, and computer performance and expert opinion. So you can consult an expert uh, in that industry to get insights about uh, like how many, like uh, your selling price plus the quantity of the, yeah, the quantity of your like, products that's going to resolve. So you can get your uh, revenue. So revenue is just like income, it's not, uh, like making income or anything, it's just the income that you get from selling uh, your, yeah, from selling your products or service. So if you are new, if it is a new business, uh, revenue estimation could be managed through market analysis, which you are doing right now, uh, plus competitive analysis uh, by analyzing your competitors' performance and market share and customer survey you, you can collect the feedback. So uh, if you have seen, I think, uh, some places actually they do this, uh, they go like house to house or like uh, on the streets. So they will show you a product and ask you how much you are willing to pay to for, for that one or um, are you interested or not, like you buy that, that thing so that you, they can get an idea of how much uh, people are willing to pay for it. Plus, uh, how many people would want to buy it? And uh, plot, uh, like uh, sorry, pilots program is just launching, uh, like launching uh, a small version of your business with a different name or uh, with a different partner. So you will you need to simulate uh, the market. So you will build uh, like a smaller version or uh, a small scale version of your business. To gather and share data, and with that one, you will uh, have an idea of how much your sales is going to be and the price that is optimal for it, uh, so that you can get started. Like you can get an idea of your level estimation, of course. And the last one is industry uh, benchmark. So using standard financial metrics and ratios for similar products of so your just. Uh, this one is actually related to uh, market analysis, but uh, more depending on the industry benchmark. Uh, but the first one is the whole uh, the whole market. I think also includes the customer schema, but this one was only uh, focuses on the industry. But there are some similar one or two. So the next one is uh, like expense estimations. So, uh, like uh, as we have this, uh, like discussed earlier, fixed cost is just cost that uh, like remains constant regardless of the production level. So, rent you will rent you will buy you will pay rent regardless of uh, how much you sold or how much you need. Uh, salaries it's also constant, and insurance. Uh, and Sorry, yeah, insurance is also yeah. Um, sorry, uh, variable cost uh, is just the cost that fluctuates with the production volume. So the more you produce, the 
drops, the more you're going to pay for it. And the uh, less you pay, the less you're going to pay. Scroll on the podcast that you want to use to be able to use for this. Directly about shipping and so on. Here, after the picture, long term investments in assets. So, as we have discussed earlier, after the screenshots are investments that are big, big investments and they are expected to last for a long time. So, this includes infrastructures, a building, uh, be machineries, be a car, be a truck, but it's uh, like a huge, like what you, you can consider as a huge investment. And that is actually last for a long time. Uh, uh, like, is it clear so far, guys? Well, are there any questions? Yes, Tarafa. Uh, thank you. My question is like, is there any difference between the revenue forecast and the cash inflow? And this yes. is uh, one question. And the uh, next one, the, when we say the contingency, uh, uh, is it a fixed? like 10 percent of the total budget or it will be different from company company from company to company or uh, from the expense to expense thank you um so we will come to do those two points i'm just asking uh, like uh, if you have things to up to this point but just to answer them uh, like for the uh, uh Let's start from the last one. So for the contingency budget, it's not a must uh, to be 5%, but it's usually 5% of the whole budget. But it's not something that depends on the expenditure or anything else, but rather uh, it's just there to meet your uh, like, like unexpected expenditures. So it's, it's not that much, but uh, it could grow depending on the company, of course, like the scale of the company. Uh, and for the cash inflow, outflow, and, uh, like actually it's cash inflow and outflow, and the final is called uh, uh, the final is called like the like the difference between the two is called uh, cash flow, net cash flow. So uh, when you buy, like when people buy from you, they could buy uh, like on account. There, there there is there is two accounts for uh, like revenue. Like it's not relevant, but uh, when you sell it, there are two accounts. So the first one is uh, on account, and the other one is cash. So when you sell, you could sell uh, like uh, by 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 taking cash, or people may uh, 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 like what we say, buy it now and pay it later, and so on. Right. So that's called on account. So, uh, like. Uh, borrowing, you can consider it as borrowing, but uh, more on uh, like a business term is on account. So, uh, like cash inflow and outflow. When you talk about cash inflow, you're not talking about uh, like uh, sales on account, right? Sales on account is not cash. It's uh, they are like uh, what you have sold, but didn't get the cash on for it yet. And also uh, for cash outflow, uh, like all car, car outflows are not cash. No, uh, so sorry, uh, like all expenditures or uh, like all expenses are not cash. Some of them could be uh, like on accounts or liability. Call it, you can borrow, like you can buy something from someone and not pay the money right away. You could pay the money like. Uh, like in uh, like in some times, like you you can take uh, banks for example. You could take uh, like uh, you could borrow money from them and pay it. So you all you still owe them money, but you didn't pay it. So that's one that could be one example. But just to let you know, uh, like always expense and income are not cash. Sometimes uh, like uh, you could sell or your income could be on account and your sales, like your expense could also be on account. So when we talk about cash inflow and outflow, we are talking only about cash. So uh, they are all, almost always less than uh, the uh, like expenditure in income. 
Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Okay. In that case, uh, let's move to cash flow. So, uh, like cash inflows are revenues from uh, sales, investment, and loans, but uh, in cash, of course, like as uh, I've mentioned earlier, and cash outflows are uh, payments uh, of expenses, capital purchase, debt repayment, uh, but of course, in cash. And cash flow production is just estimates like monthly cash inflow and outflow to maintain the liquidity. So, like I've said, uh, all big businesses need to be liquid, uh, of course, to a point, so that they can meet their uh, short-term obligations. So, uh, cash flow projection is going to end pass with that. So, cash flow is just the difference between cash inflow minus uh, cash outflow. So, it should always be positive. It should be greater than the information and for the last one contingency plan is just uh, like just to prepare for unexpected financial challenge like we have discussed earlier uh, so companies set aside funds to cover like unforeseen expenses and so on even governments do this uh, so in uh, it's used only for emergency and to avoid uh, like uh, disrupting the normal operations. So they are not used to cover expenses, but they are used to cover unexpected uh, expenses or unforeseen expenses. Because for the expenses, we already have an expense budget, right? So to calculate them, it's just uh, 5 to 10 percent of your total budget. But this is typical, but uh, not always, and not the best, but typical, it's uh, like in between this. Yeah, so this, uh, before we move on to this one, is everything clear so, uh, so far, guys? Okay, Germay, uh, anyone else with questions? Anything? Okay, is everything clear? Uh, okay, now we take that as a yes. So let's move to the final parts, which are uh, steps uh, like in operational budget plan. So the first, the first, the first thing that you need to do is set objectives, uh, which include define the financial goal uh, of uh, for the budgeting period. So what do you want to do in this financial, uh, like in this budgeting period, uh, whether it is a year or. A semester or like a half a year or anything, but you need to uh, define the goal. And then you will uh, collect information uh, about past financial performance. If, if you have, if your company is not new, uh, you will have this data. Or you can uh, also include uh, market conditions and operational needs. And then from this, you can estimate your revenue and expenses. And then you can calculate your budget based on these two. So you compile your revenue and expense uh, estimates into the comprehensive budget document. And then you will just review, uh, like, uh, of course, you need to include the contingency uh, in the expense and uh, also like the capital expenditures and expense uh, and others. Uh, and for the revenue, you will uh, include the, like, the income that you think you will get for this budget period and then you will create, create your budget and then you will just review and adjust it assess the budget for accuracy and make necessary adjustments monitoring and control is the final part so track your financial performance against yeah. the budget uh, and make change that's so uh, like you only need to do up to uh, the fifth step of course uh, but th these are just nice to do yeah, so how do you monitor and control? So the first uh, thing that you can do is track the, per the performance of your uh, budget. So regularly compare the actual performance with the budget and identify any barriers that are happening and assess whether the, the, the business is on track 
uh, to meet its financial goals. Uh, variance analysis means if there is some difference between the two, which means the budget in the actual uh, like para para performance of the company, you can figure out, like uh, you can uh, figure out or understand the reason for variance and take corrective actions if necessary. And the final is just uh, assessment adjustments, so you can make adjustments to the budget or to the operational, uh, like the actual budget, based on the performance analysis to ensure that the budget, the, the business remains aligned with the strat its, uh, strategic objectives. So, like for example, you can take a manufacturing company that uh, they might adjust its budget to increase marketing expenditure if that trust hits uh, fall below the production. So you already have a budget for marketing, but uh, like the sales, like the sales that you are adding uh, is very low. So you, you, know, like, you can decide to increase the market budget in order to like, help with the falling sales. So it's not like a, a must or it's not something that cannot be changed, but you can change it with you should not change it very often, like because it would mess up your uh, like performance and uh, decision making. Yeah, so that's it from my side. Um, any questions? Do you have any questions or any questions or any comments? Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, Kirill. Uh, really, it's a, a very important uh, presentation. Really, I I really appreciate it. And maybe uh, actually at uh, this uh, part, I don't have question. It's as uh, maybe as a, if it's possible as a recommendation, if you have uh, some practical example to show us, uh, maybe based on some scenario how to uh, prepare a budget plan, especially this operational budget plan, because most of the time, uh, especially for uh, those who want to uh, to join some NGOs and other uh, financial institutions, the first point that will appear in their uh, written exam is like preparation of this uh, operational budget. So if there is some kind of uh, approach, if you have plan for that, I think, it will be good to show us. That's uh, my my recommendation. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, that's the recommendation. I actually don't have uh, like I didn't prepare any uh, for this session, but I can provide a format. Um, find one and uh, share on the drive. Um, Collins. Okay, Carol. Uh, thank you for. That uh, presentation. Uh, actually, my first question is uh, the one you just answered from my character. And then uh, I just want you to probably let me throw some more light, maybe by just uh, briefly talking about it again on uh, pricing. Yeah. Uh, pricing? Yes. Uh, pricing is not actually part of this session. Uh, uh, how to price your products? I think you mean that, right? Pricing strategy. Yes, yes, that's the that's the one I mean. Uh, okay, uh, it's it was actually part of last uh, week's uh, tutorial. I have shared the uh, documents. Uh, did you check it, or do you have any specific questions on that one? Okay, anyway, I didn't get the last things you said. I didn't get it. Uh, like, I, I was just saying we had a session on uh, creating a budgeting, like a pricing strategy last week. Uh, did you check it or do you have any specific questions related to that one? Because for setting pricing, uh, we, have a, we had a session last week for this week, for this project. Okay, okay. I think that's the reason I didn't catch up. I wasn't able to really uh, follow up. I didn't attend. Okay, I think that's the reason. Maybe I'll go and check. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please uh, just check it. And if you have any specific questions on that one, uh, you can reach out to me or uh, to us. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, colleagues. Uh, anyone else, Casa? Uh, okay. Thank you, uh, Gerard. Thank you for the information you share us. Uh, yeah, budget or finances. Uh, I can say blend of a one project. Uh, once we identify a project, once we identify a problem or a gap in one uh, site, the second step is uh, just uh, uh, organizing the budget or the finance for that uh, project. So the one you show us the steps, how we are going to combine or how we can prepare our budget for the project is very vital and very important. Uh, and I appreciate for that one. Uh, maybe when we go to in detail on the budgets, yeah, as maybe Tarafa says, there are different kinds of budgets. In, in, the, in one project budget, there are components like personnel, operational, admin like that one so uh, the the overall that you are going to show us is how we are going to do or prepare our the our project budget this is the general one maybe as the Rafa says when we go to the specifically after we we collect the data or the budget or the finance overall then we can divide it into admin, into uh, operational, or if we have a systems uh, like different financial systems, also we will upload our budget to that system. It is up to our organizations. Uh, it's different or from organization to organization. This is good. Uh, maybe my this is my suggestion. Uh, the other thing is I have one question. Maybe can you take me to the control method? Uh, control with it or here you yeah, know, monitoring and controlling maybe this is this the overall control for the project budget or specifically maybe there is also expenditure and uh, there is also budget lines for each budget will uh, will put a budget line uh, for each activity will allocate a budget so there are some mechanisms that we are going to monitor or control our budget on the budget line or on the activity line based on activities so uh, where is the controlling mechanism for controlling the expenditure our cash is uh, activity based uh, controlling maybe you miss or this is overall uh yeah so uh, okay uh, like i mean like uh... Did I cut you off or are you done with questions? Casa? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, like, are you done with the questions or did I cut you off? Yeah, yeah. The question, as you maybe okay. in a second, the second uh, variance analysis, maybe that's similar to that one, but I need some uh, some additional in this monitoring and control. For example, controlling or monitoring of the expenditure. Uh, each month yeah. or each yeah. quarter or like that once yes. yes yeah so that's a very good question and a very good detailed question so uh like budget is a very very wide like uh vast uh topic that we cannot uh like uh cover with not only with one session but all uh, like not even in one minute so it's a very vast uh Topic and as you have said, uh, different uh, like section like sectors have different budgets and budgeting mechanisms. Uh, this one is just to help you get started with budget, so it's just an overall, right? Uh, and also for the monitoring and cop control, you are not expected to do this for this project because you don't have uh, the actual financial performance of your company, but it's just uh, like good to know that there is uh, like uh, i just wanted to show that uh, you need to impact the performance of your actual financial performance and compare it with the budget and identify any variance so uh, like for example for the uh, for the first months uh, you might have uh, like uh, budgeted uh, let's say like you have forecasted the budget of 100 million 
if from the first month like, uh, or the first week, uh, if there is a variance uh, of the actual financial performance with the budget one, so there is a variance. So by variance, we just mean the di a difference, right? So you need to uh, like see these things, identify what they are, and take adjustments, take ad action. So that's what I just wanted to, to show, but it's not meant for like, a detailed uh, overview of how you can control it. You know? Monitors, as you have said, there are many, many ways to can control uh, like the credits. For example, uh, like there is one mechanism that you can control or like track your expense for the marketing. Uh, you can track your expense for uh, like uh, for the fixed rate. Uh, like if if there, there is any change from the fixed rate from the variable expense, so. Even for depreciation, you can see that one by uh, checking its uh, like current value and so. So we're not we're not going to go into that part because that's very very complex, very out of the scope of this week's project. So for this week, you are only expected to come up with a number that you think. Is going to be your dispensional leg. For, of course, that's not what you think, but uh, from your analysis, what you get. So, by by this, what I mean is, so you already have a persona, right? Like uh, from task one and task two, you have created a persona, you have created your uh, like product, and so on. And on task three, task four, you have created your pricing strategy. So, you already know. Uh, like who is your customer and you already know how much you're going to be pricing them, right? And you're, you already know how to manufacture. So it's if it is a product, you already know how much you're going to be pricing for it, right? And if it is a, a service, you, know, you already know how much you are going to expend or uh, how much your expense is going to be uh, for providing that service, right? When you are developing the product, of course. So. What we expected to do here is you're gonna just multiply like the uh, price by the number of uh, like by the number of users you have, depending on like I really don't want to specify it because I don't like uh, different people have different types of products, right? So one could have a subscription-based product, the other may have a service-based product, and the other may have uh, a product uh, like, uh, like that's great to see. So, the budgeting for this each, like, these are just three types of uh, products that I, I have mentioned. Like, so, the budgeting for like the procedure for each is going to be different. Uh, so, that's why I don't want to lim lim limit it to one example, but just as just for the sake of giving an example, uh, so you already have, you already know. Uh, the price that you are going to ask for the product or the service, and you already know the unit that you are going to sell uh, for products and uh, right, the number of customers you're going to have for service. So that too is going to give you uh, your forecast of revenue or income for that period. And for the expenditure, you already like when you are developing the product, you already know how much it's going to cost. Uh, and what are the like uh, resources that are uh, that you are going to use, right? So, like, of course, you not get you might not get the exact number uh, or the exact uh, expense that are that you are going to be using for the product, but you can have a rough estimate uh, of the expenses. Right? So you already have that expense. So by just taking these two, you can create your budget. Of course, like, like you, you, you would add uh, like uh, the five percent to ten percent contingency budget. Uh, you, you might add uh, like uh, capital expenditure and so on. So you need to consider these things as well, and especially for the capital expenditure. It's not a mess, but it depends on your company. Right? So it's, if it is a product, uh, a production, like if you produce a product. And uh, like you are in charge of producing it, you will definitely need to buy machineries. So you will have a like a capital expenditure. But if it is a service, 
you might not need to uh, buy like or have an experience, capital expenditure. So it's a very, very, very vast thing, but just try to simplify it. You already know your price. You already know like how much you need to expect to sell in a year or half a year. Uh, you already know like when you uh, when developing the product. You already know your expenses. So just have these things and build your your budget on top of this. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, good question. Thank you for that one. Uh, anyone else? Any questions? For me in the session, or everything is everything clear? Maybe sorry. Can you uh, share with us this slide at the end of this session? Thank you. Yes. 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 Sure, it's right now. Um, everyone, just make sure to check the drives uh, like after the sessions because we always share the right now. But yeah, I will share it. Um, okay, if there is no more questions, uh, that's it for my side. Thank you guys and have a great day. Bye.